And I want you to listen to me. And let me tell you where we're headed. You see, you can turn your living room into the bar room. In other words, when it says eating and drinking with the drunken, it means that you're eating the same food, drinking the same food that's intoxicated the world. They are intoxicated now with sports and entertainment. I can't, can't believe the intoxication. You go to Dallas, Texas when the Cowboys are playing on Sunday morning. If the service isn't over 12, if the Cowboys are playing at 12 o'clock, they dismiss at 11.30. And there's a screen in the basement for everybody to go down and watch the kickoff. God can wait for the Cowboys. There's an intoxication with sports in the United States that is absolutely demonic. You say, oh, Brother Dave, come on, sports, that's innocent. It can become so addictive that you begin to eat and drink with those who are drunken with entertainment and you can bring those videos into your house and get so involved in eating and drinking and folks, I'm going to tell you, this begins to satiate the mind. It begins to affect your thinking. You know, there are some Christian men, if the church has three or four services on Sunday, they get to the earliest service. They hope it was six o'clock in the morning so they can go for their little hour religion. And then they go all day long for football games, basketball, and sit there sucking potato chips and not one thought of spending an hour along with Jesus in the Word. I know men who are Christians who can't memorize two verses, but they can tell you the name of every basketball player, every football player, their height, their weight, and their statistics. Now, folks, I'm not, not trying to be facetious. I'm telling you, that's a shame. And that's what's happening in the body of Jesus Christ today. Sports. It can kill you. It can rob you of your spiritual life. You eat and drink with the drunken. Do I hear a whole lot of wives saying, Amen, Pastor Dave, give it. Well, let me talk to you. Sister, what are you eating and drinking? Are you eating and drinking with the drunken? There's nothing filthier than soap operas. Nudity, filth, adultery, fornication. And I'm going to look you right in the eye and tell you that if you're sitting there when Jesus comes, and you're watching that filth. How do you expect to come out of that cesspool suddenly into the arms of Jesus? How do you sit there and watch those talk shows that are nothing but slop from the very pits? Absolute filth. And you're going to feed on that? You're going to drink that drink? You're going to eat that food with the drunken and get intoxicated with this? And you come to the house of God and you still think, what's going to happen to Mary? Because she's in her third husband and, and you're going to sit here. All these things going through your mind. You're going to praise the Lord. In light of what I'm talking to you about right here, I want to get dead serious with this church. We're talking about walking in holiness in this church. We're talking about setting an example for the lost. We're talking about being free to worship the Lord with clean hands and a pure heart. And you hear us talk about this idolatry. And yet I, I get the feeling that some of you are not hearing a word I say or any other pastor that's mentioned it, that you're not hearing it all. But I'm going to ask you a question. I want to say it in very great love right now. Who told you? Who told you it's okay to sit for hours drinking in filth in front of television? Who told you it's not idolatry to sit and watch something that's totally corrupted out of the pits of hell. Who told you that's not corrupt? Who told you it's not an idol? Was it Jesus who told you that? Was it the Holy Ghost said, you're mature. Brother Dave's just on a hang-up right now. He'll get over it. No, folks, I hear the holy thunder in my soul. I hear a God says you don't sit in the seat of the scornful. I hear a scripture that says, I'll set no evil thing before my eyes. I hear the word that says, bring no abomination into your house. I hear it by the hundreds of scriptures, and I don't understand why our people in this church are not hearing it. You say you are a believer? You say you want to go all the way with Jesus? Who told you it's okay? Did the Holy Ghost tell you you can sit there and watch Dallas and Dynasty? Did the Holy Ghost say that you're mature? You can sit there and watch violence? You can bring those R-rated movies and videos into your house and come into this house and praise God? Who told you that? I ask you another question in love. As a pastor who weeps over this congregation, who's talking to you now? Is it the devil going to tell you to tear it away and get away from idolatry? Is it the enemy? Is the devil saying, get away from iniquity? Is it the devil that breaks my heart over this kind of iniquity in the church? Is it? All right, then if it's God, you've got a dilemma. You have to make a choice. You cannot say Brother Wilkerson is legalistic. You cannot say, I'm sick and tired of hearing this. You have to make a choice. And I'll tell you why the choice has to be made, because it's getting worse. 
And if you can't handle it now, and this gets a hold of you, the lust and the filth that comes out of that truth, if it gets a hold of your heart any more than it has now, no angel, nobody is going to ever break it from you. In Revelation, the 12th chapter, there's a war going on. The Bible says the war is declared. The devil's declared war. There's an angry devil coming down, the scripture says in this chapter. He has great wrath, and he's going to send out a flood. When the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man-child. The man-child is the church of Jesus Christ. The Bible makes it very clear that the devil in the last day, the war that he declares is on the church, that they may be carried away. The scripture says he's going to send this flood of filth, lust, temptation. He's going to come against the physical body. He's going to come against the mind. He's going to come against everything to carry them away, the Bible says, that they may be carried away with the flood. And we see many being carried away today. He, he has, bought, he, he has take, literally taken over television with filth. Closer than that, does it matter about the Jerusalem that's in our own hearts? The sign of ruin that's slowly draining spiritual power and passion? Blind to lukewarmness. Blind to the mixture that's creeping in. You see, when spiritual blindness comes, very few recognize it. It's the last recognized thing that happens to a child of God. If I, as a pastor, knew you personally, and I was watching your life, and as one of the pastors of this church, I come to you and say, I... I I love you, but I have to tell you the truth. You're changing. You know what you were. Something of the world has got in your heart. I don't know if it's television. I don't know what it is that has your heart, but I see changes in you. I, I don't see the brokenness. I don't see the compassion you had once for your family. I don't see concern for your unsafe loved ones. You're changing. Little by little, something's happening to you. Would it bring you to your knees when the ruin that you are not even aware of is suddenly brought before your eyes? But the truth of the matter is, in all honesty, there are numbers among us that are changing and they don't know it. You've lost your fight. You see, when you, when you read the book of Joshua, it's almost a book of failure because they lost their heart. They lost the fight. That's all the devil wants to do is get the fight out of you and kill it. So you won't labor in prayer anymore. You won't weep before God anymore. You can sit and watch television and your family go to hell. Let me ask you. Is what I just said convicted you at all? Did you just let that go in one ear out the other? When a pastor tells you right now, hey, and I don't know who you are, but the Holy Ghost is speaking through me, you're changing. Little by little, you're losing the love of God, the love of Christ. Little by little, these things are making inroads. Folks, why do you think your pastors cry out against television? Do you think we get any pleasure out of the flesh? There's no pleasure in somebody coming and saying, I heard your message and I threw away my television. That doesn't give me any pleasure. It doesn't give any pastor pleasure. We have given account because we watch for your soul. These things, I don't know where it is on the job, things we listen to, these things that creep in, and suddenly this Jerusalem, the walls go down. And ruin sets in. Does it really matter to you that your unsaved loved ones are dying and we're getting closer and closer to the end? Does it really concern you? They could die and go to hell. Even though you're a lover of Christ. This is the movie poster for the Hollywood blockbuster Black Swan, directed by Darren Aronofsky, the director of the new blasphemous remake of the Noah movie.
which is being marketed to churches and Christian youth groups all over the country. And this director is clearly promoting Baphomet on this movie poster, the symbol for the Antichrist. Right here you can see the eyes, the mouth, the whole face, and the shape of Baphomet. What we need to ask ourselves as followers of Christ is where do we draw the line? Christ said, Love not the world, nor the things of the world. For if you love the world, the love of the Father is not with you. But we, as Christians today, have been so desensitized to the culture, so desensitized to the filth that is constantly pushed at us, that many believers don't even use the discernment of the Holy Spirit before they put something before their eyes. We need to ask ourselves in the light of Christ, should I be sitting down and watching a worldly remake of the Holy Scriptures that I profess to believe in? Were these men of God that I look up to, Paul, Peter, John, Christ himself, would they have been sitting, eating and drinking with the drunken at movie theaters or at coliseums in their day, watching the same things, feeding on the same entertainment as the world? The answer is no. The answer will always be no. We can't fulfill the Great Commission. We can't be lights to the world if we walk alongside them, never telling them of the gospel, never telling them of the truth that can save them. Never bringing them to the light of Christ. The time's growing short. It's no longer the hour where we can walk along the fence. It never was the hour where we could walk along the fence. Now is the time to make your stand, to profess the saving power of Christ to a darkening and decaying world.